What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode. This time, we're going to be talking about some business stuff. So some of you may know, some of you may not know, but I do own a, a like a pack and ship, a postal store, and I'd like to go over some of that with you today on today's episode. So let's get right into it. Today, it's all about how do you set up a pack and ship type business? What, what is it that you need to look for? The first thing you wanna look for is a good location. It's all about your location. If you're way out of the way, you're not convenient, nobody's gonna come visit your store or you'll have much fewer customers than you normally would. What you want to do is find somewhere where there's a good anchor store, something like a big name brand grocery store or clothing store, something like that that has one of those business strip centers that's around it with a bunch of other businesses, some mobile phone companies maybe, some restaurants maybe, stuff like that. Because all those pieces are gonna work together and attract people to that strip center. And while they are there shopping or eating or whatever, they're more likely going to walk into your store and give you some business as well. And that's what you really wanna look for when you're trying to set up or start thinking about opening a postal store. The second thing you wanna start thinking about, once you have your location identified, you're gonna to wanna to know what size should I pick? And that kind of varies by location. So if you're in New York, you may not be able to get a 1500 square foot facility. But let's say that you're in um, Myrtle Beach, you could have a 6,000 and 8,000 square foot facility and have printing and banners, vinyl wraps, all that stuff can be going on inside your postal store. It's, it's totally market variable. My store that I have is 1500 square feet. It works out really well. The only thing that I would caution everybody about is that you don't need as much front space as you think that you do. So like my store, I've got all this space in the front and I have such a hard time filling it with product because my product is really a service. So I have printing, I have faxes, I have packages, I have packing, I have all this stuff that goes inside the postal business but it doesn't necessarily um, take up room in the front. The front has more like your office supplies. I've got a few boxes, a little bit of bubble wrap, you know, just some stuff to kind of see if people will pick up other items and that's okay too. But always think about what it is you want to do behind the scenes because you are a service company. And so bring that behind the scenes and, and make sure that you have enough room in your back room to support whatever it is you want to do. So there's all kinds of carriers out there. There's just, everybody's got their own system, their own way of doing things. So the main ones are going to be DHL for international stuff. You'll have FedEx, you'll have UPS, and you'll have the United States Postal Service. Those are the four big ones. There is uh, in select areas, there's this thing called LSO, which is Lone Star Overnight. I, d I don't personally carry it, but I've heard other people do. Um, but that usually takes four to six weeks to get your accounts, just your number, to say to the, the computer software, hey, I've got this account, this is how I'm going to be ringing up all of these, these packages. And so you, have, you need to make sure that you are accounting for that month to a month and a half that you are going to be building your, your business, but you're not going to be able to get any money for it yet. And so when you go sign a lease, you want to make sure that you either have your accounts ready to go or they understand that you're not going to be ready to open your doors for two months, potentially. Um, with that being said, you also need to figure out kind of what software you want to use. There's two main ones. The one that I currently use is Postal Mate. I've found that they do really well. 
they update regularly, they send out notices if they're having problems, they're really responsive on the telephone, I've never had an issue. I've personally never used the other service, but I do like Postal Mate, and I'm not sponsored to say that, I'm just giving them a shout out that I, that's who I like and that's who I've been using. I've interviewed with the other company and I, I don't care for it. Um, but setting up all of your inventory and stuff, all of that comes with your software. The next thing that you're going to want to kind of be thinking about is do you want to hire an employee? Uh, for me and Angela, we did not hire any employees for a long time. We ran it ourselves, predominantly Angela ran it. And as we got bigger, we never took a paycheck. We just constantly rerouted that money back into the business. And by doing that, we were able to pick up an employee and now we're up to three employees at the time of this filming. And so we, we've we never taken a, a paycheck or anything out of the business because we want to grow our business to as big as we can get it. And then we'll start taking our, our payments out of that. And as an owner getting ready to build this, uh, this pack and ship model, you need to think about that as well. If you can afford to pay somebody and afford all the other expenses, that's great. That's a really big lifesaver. I wasn't fortunate enough to do that, but if you have the ability to do it, by all means, go for it, because it will help you. Um, the final thing that I, I want to talk about is you need to make sure that you pick product that people are going to want to buy. And if you have other businesses or other products that you can put in the store, then do it. So we wrote the, the Levi book and Angela and I both do woodworking stuff. All of that is in our store and we run those as separate businesses through the postal business and it allows us to get some supplemental income just off of what's in the store and if you have something like that then that's something that you want to promote that's why I was saying previously think about what's in your back room so if you do car vinyl wraps or you do vinyl banners you do all this stuff with vinyl well, you need a big spot for the plotter, for the cutter, for all that stuff. And so make sure that you have the space to support whatever ancillary products you want to put in there that still cohesively go together with kind of what you're selling, right? You don't want to have a pack and ship store and sell um, bananas and apples. I, that doesn't really go together. You don't want to you don't want to branch out too far you want to keep it concise now if you're growing the bananas and apples and it's organic from your garden that might be different but you don't want to get too carried away and make your customers just think that it's cluttered and you're just kind of greedy that because that's not going to work out always remember there are no extra customers you have a chance to make a really good impression that first day and I challenge you to do that every single day and some days it's going to be hard some days the carriers don't pick up or they're super late and you have to stay super late until they pick up everybody's packages that's part of the game and you need to be prepared for that but there are some good days there are some really exciting things that come through your store that you're going to be like oh man that's pretty cool I didn't know I could ship something like that We've shipped airplane parts, um, deer heads. We've got a taxidermist that brings us all kinds of stuff. It's crazy, some of the stuff that they, they try to ship. And we've, we've done it, and it's really cool to do. And we own everything. We do not franchise. Um, I, I'm on the fence about franchises. It's a lot of money, usually, that the franchise wants, and that's okay but you as the business owner need to be able to support that and not go in the hole because once you start getting upside down in your business then it becomes more of a stressor than a stress reliever so just be prepared for that 
I hope this episode helped you kind of walk through some of the quick and dirty of what's inside a postal store and what needs to be done. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the description down below. As always, give us a like. That helps the YouTube algorithm a lot. And uh, make sure you subscribe, set your notification bell. That also helps the YouTube algorithm. And uh, just let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to discuss or go into further detail. I'll be glad to do it. I hope you all have a great day. Take care. Bye.